Hey everyone, how you doing? Uh, just a quick update on the car. Well, I say quick, they're always never as quick as I mean them to be. But uh, we've done over a thousand miles, actually we've done 1139. Um, I broke the thousand miles last night. And uh, first thing I'd done was uh, stuck launch control on and tried that out, which was an absolute hoot. <laughs> this thing just, uh, man, it just goes. <laughs> you just pin the foot to the floor, watch it bounce off a of five grand and dump the clutch and it just takes off. Uh, one thing that did get me though, when I'd done that, the uh, I get this orange light flash up in front of me on the on the uh, by the rev counter uh, tachometer. So straight away I let off, and then I don't know about 20 minutes later I'm doing like another pull, and it done it again, and it's an orange light, small. And I thought, oh shit, it's the check engine light. Something's happening when I rev this bitch up. So, uh, oh God, damn, I thought that was a loose horse out in the road. Somebody got it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, where was I? The, yeah, so I go home, I do some research on it. Um, can't find anyone else that's got that problem. Um, I get into the car and Without starting the engine, I put the ignition on so I can see the warning lights light up and the check engine light is right where it was coming on. So I'm like, oh fuck. Anyway, I let it cool down and everything else and wondered if it was like uh, overheating or something. So I took it out again. This time I'd done a pull and looked down at it and it's an RS light that comes up. It's a shift light. It's pretty much a waste of fucking time, but um, it's there. And they had the common sense to put it next to the uh, check engine light, which really helps, doesn't it? I'm sorry, but that, that there annoyed me. Uh, so I was all that worry for nothing. And they do tell you about this shift light in the manual, and I did see it, but I thought it came up on the little display in the middle of the clocks, this one right here. That's what I thought it was gonna be. But uh, no, it's it, um, it comes up down down on the uh, tachometer. So anyway, that was out of the way. But then when I done one of those pulls last night, the car was like veering to the left and the right, like little like you know little shaky. And it done it the other day as well when I was um, passing a car under wide open throttle. Um, and I've done it, I've probably done it half a dozen times. Um, of course, I haven't been uh, really pushing the car, but um, going past 1,000 uh, miles, I started uh, started going a little bit more, uh, a little bit more open on the throttle. And uh, started getting it, I actually hit uh, 110 miles an hour last night. And it was shaking so bad, I couldn't do anything else, it was just, I had a little room for more, but I was only in fourth gear. <laughs> and, um, because I wanted to see that shift light. Of course, if there's any, uh, any policeman watching or anything, uh, that was on a closed road. Uh, so yeah, I, I had this, uh, veering left and right. So I took it over to the dealership today and I had a question about the backup camera and a little piece of trim on the back on the bottom of the seatbelt um, assembly had come off and I couldn't get it back on there. And they took a when I took it over it took ages to put it on and finally they, they got it in. It's like the magic millimeter that you've got to get it just right. So uh, <clears throat> yeah and the backup camera. Um, I'm used to a Subaru backup camera. Um, those things are clear. I mean, it's like HD. Um, Fords, nah, it's like a fog. And I thought I had an issue with the camera, but no, it's just the Ford thing. So uh, yeah, let's put this bitch in sport. And uh, let's have some fun. But, uh, hang on, I'm concentrating now. Well, kind of. Oh man, I love this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, so I get into one of their Ford STs, um, Focus STs, and put it in reverse, and sure enough, exactly the same camera, exactly the same, like, f like kind of like a blurriness. It's not, not that crisp and not that bright. But, I mean, it's functional. I mean, it works just fine. I was just used to seeing that crystal clear um, picture that I get on the Subaru. So, um, well, it shows you there's an intersection up here and it takes fucking ages to get there. So anyway, that was no problem. So there, there's two problem issues kind of fixed. And then I told him about the veering and he said, well, we'll have to get that into the shop and um, bring it over Monday or Tuesday and uh, and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it and we'll road test it and find out what's going on, you know. And I told him it was wide open throttle, it was happening and it's in a straight line and everything else. So anyway, I come home and I thought, well, while I was there talking to him, I said, oh, maybe it's uh, just an alignment issue or maybe even tire pressures. I said, I haven't checked the tire pressures. So when I got home, first thing I'd done was check the tire pressures. And believe it or not, three of them were almost 60 PSI and the other one was like just a shade of like 51 PSI. I'm like, holy fuck. I look inside the door and they call for 46 PSI on all wheels. So I do, a, and I'm not used to putting that much in. WRX was like um, 36, I think, and the BRZ was like 33 or 32. So I'm not used to putting that much in. 46 seemed excessive. So I had a look online, see what everyone else was doing. And apparently the European car is um is 41 38 or something like that and it seems like everyone else in the us that have been reading up on it are doing about 41 38 so that's i think i've done 42 39 no no i didn't no i done i done 41 39 and yeah and took it out just a second ago went to the store to get some uh, groceries and the car is transformed. Um, yeah, it's, it, it was good before. It was surprisingly good for that much uh, for that much tire pressure. But now it's uh, yeah, it's a completely different car. It feels great. It's the ride is uh, obviously so much more comfortable. I'm not burying my foot then, just in case someone thinks, well, I didn't pick up much. Um, I just rolled in my foot onto the throttle. Uh, yeah, so I, I um, straight after I'd done it, I had another quick look online, you know, and a lot of people said, well, when they deliver these things, they're up there, they put 60 PSI in them to stop the tires from flat spine. Uh, that's great, but these dealers, when they've got them, you know, it, let them sit on the forecourt like that, fine. But when you sell them, I don't think they know. I'm going to um, let them know tomorrow that, hey, I've done some research on this and this is your issue. And uh, hopefully someone uh, kind of all of a sudden realised that, oh, every other car I've got out there has got fucking 60 PSI in it. Or every car in this kind of bracket, uh, their STs and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, maybe some of the... Uh, other cars have got more in it, who knows? Maybe some of their trucks have got shitload in there. Uh, so, yeah, that was uh, that was my day to day. But apart from that, everything's fine, um, except for the fuel usage. Fuel usage is terrible. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna spend so much, my wife is not gonna like this. You can drive it, um, kind of sensibly and I got like about 24 miles to the gallon out of it um, which is not great most of the time I'm getting like 21 got the old popping going then um, yeah most of the time I'm getting 21 uh, just driving you know like I am now go to work drive come out have a little play around in the evening and uh, so maybe once I calm down a little bit, I'm not going to put the miles on like I did on the last car. You know, the last car was was crazy. You know, I had it, I had it like uh, six weeks or two months or something. I had ten thousand miles on or something stupid. Um, I put a shitload of miles on that car. Uh, when I sold it, there was thirty thousand miles on it, and I'd had it a year. 
So there was 10,000. I mean, I should have gone about 15 to 20 going to work and back. So there was, you know, another 10 to 15 um, of me just uh, running around. And most of that was in the early days of owning it. Uh, I'm going to try not to do that with this one. I already have. I've already put the 1,000 on it. But I wanted to get there quick and I want to get, you know, the grips with the car. But I'm not going to be... Uh, Hooning it every single day after work all over the place. Um, I'll make these videos and uh, you know apart from that I'm trying to try not to uh, drive the hell out of it because uh, this one's gonna have to last me a few years. Um, yeah I, I can't deal with any more negative equity in a car and uh, I'm not getting rid of this one. So uh, yeah, it's like, and they, they told me while I was over there someone almost bought the WRX today. Uh, they said they took it out for a ride and they didn't quite like how quick it spooled up. <laughs> it's bizarre. It's strange how people... Uh, see, now this one doesn't spool up as quick. Or, do you know what? I shouldn't say that. It does, but you don't realise it does. It's not a big surge and puts you in your seat or anything. You don't hear, like, the suction of the air like you do on the WRX. But this one is just got like a flat, just flat torque um, curve. No, not a curve, it's flat. <laughs> it goes up, it's flat, and goes back off like a box. Uh, so you, it's a very linear power. And I'm not, um, I'm not putting this one up against the uh, WRX. I'm just kind of saying what the differences are on power delivery. Um, so yeah, it's... Uh, for me, coming from that to this, this one felt a little bit lackluster at first. Um, I've got used to it now. It does have plenty of power. Um, it's got power where it matters. Um, low down, like there, it's got this like low down grunt. And uh, let me see what mode I got it in because I only just rolled. Okay, we are in sport. We're in fourth gear. Let's put the foot to the floor and go. Holy shit! Okay, let's let the foot off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking insane. Let's go back on it. There's no veering tonight. Oh, let's slow it down because there's a lot of cops around here. A lot of cops live in my neighbourhood. Oh my god, that feels great. The, car, the engine's loosened up a little bit. I mean, it's still tight, still new. Um, but it has, it's a huge difference to when I first picked it up. The power is becoming more usable, um, more, um, more, uh, what's the words I use? On, the power's on tap, it's there, it's ready. Whereas before it just felt, it, it was just all a little too tight. Um, although you know it had all that grunt, but I never took it up too far. But uh, do you know what, I should have done the launch control for you folks, shouldn't I? That'd be the next video. I'll um, post another one up, I don't know, uh, Saturday or Sunday or something, and uh, we'll do, uh, we do a launch control. And I'll get my OBD um, sensor. I don't know where it is. I'll have to find it. I think it's in the garage somewhere. But I'll, um, I'll get that, and we'll stick that in, and we'll, try, we'll do a standing still uh, quarter of a mile and a zero to 60. I believe I can do that on that with the tour cap. But uh, yeah, until then, uh, I appreciate you watching. For you uh, again, for you Subaru fans, I'm sorry, buddy. I really am. I. It was an honor being part of that Subaru family. It really was, and it was an honor having that car. Um, I did have a little bit of buyer's remorse. I must admit, just a little bit, and I kind of missed the car just a little bit. But the reason it was only a little bit is because I got this, and this is cool. And a lot of people said, oh, you'll blow the engine up, and this happened, that'll happen. Uh, I've got warranty on it. Um, and once it's, if it does have that problem with the gasket, um, then I'll get it done under warranty. I'll have a car off of them to get to work and back. And um, everyone will be happy. And <laughs> I, I'm not too worried about it. So, uh, but yeah, the reliability of the Subaru is uh, fantastic. I've never, ha never had a problem except for the clutch that went out on mine, which, uh, which it was a bit, of, was a bit of a fucker after uh, ten thousand miles. But uh, 
how it happens. Uh, but apart from that, no other issues. Anyway, I better uh, shut down and I will catch up with you in the next couple of days. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye.